We're playing a game of what's more likely here on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, looking at the retirement of Bergeron and Krejci, goalie hugs or no goalie hugs, and also cup or lottery next season. Let's get into it, shall we, on today's episode. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Friday, June 9th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day. Every single day. I know it's been difficult to talk about the Bruins, hear about the Bruins, think about the Bruins since their disappointing first round loss, but I really do appreciate all those who have continued to tune in. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to get tickets for all your favorite events. Download the app. Use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Another reminder that you can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app on YouTube. Find the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at LOCKEDNHLBruins. And you can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. To begin the podcast, a huge congratulations to David Posternock and his partner Rebecca on welcoming their baby girl, Freya Ivy, to the world. Uh, Boston Bruins fans thrilled to see that on social media this morning. Both David and Rebecca shared it, and then the Bruins just tweeted it out as well. Uh, After all they've been through, just a a beautiful way to start the day, and, and we're all so very happy for all three of them. All right, let's play What's More Likely here today and we're gonna start with Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci, what's more likely that they return or they retire? It's a difficult question because they're both still very high level players. Patrice Bergeron is a finalist for the Selkie trophy and likely is gonna win another Selkie trophy. That means he's not just Still pretty good. He is still the best two-way forward in the NHL. The best at age 37. I know he wants to call it a day before his skill set dwindles to the past where, or to the point where he's not as effective as he wants to be. But I mean, at least wait until you're a finalist and don't win the Selkie as opposed to winning it two years in a row at age 37. Krejci, again, came back this past season. A lot of people thought he may have slowed down a bit or might miss a step after spending last year playing for Olomouc of the Czechia League, but he came back and put up good numbers, locking down the second-line center role with David Krejci, I'm sorry, David Pasternak and Pavel Zaka as his primary line mates. Both came back with a view to winning another Stanley Cup, and they were key members of a record-breaking regular season team. Both players missed time in the playoffs due to injury. I know that was a disappointment. Probably should have been a bit more load management down the stretch. Uh, but injuries are a part of the game, no matter what age you're at, of course. Still could have used both of them at optimal playing capacity in the playoffs, of course. Although David Krejci was still very good. Um, played a huge game in Game 7. And we're going to have to see... Yeah, whether or not they both have a desire to return and make good on the um, quest to finish their careers with another Stanley Cup. 
Maybe they feel they can't contribute when it matters most. Maybe they feel they can't grind through an 82-game regular season. And maybe they feel it's just not worth it to take lesser value to help out the team at this point in their careers. All valid questions. They have family considerations. David Krejci's family specifically lives down in the Carolinas. They're not as close, so it's kind of like he's on the road all year long, even though he's in Boston where he's been home for a while. And Bergeron, I know that, you know, they have another baby on the way and his family's growing. You want to be there for those special moments, especially when probably your last infant that you get to to witness. Now, for me, what's more likely? I think it is more likely that they do come back as opposed to retiring. And I say that for two reasons. One, obviously the bitter ending against Florida this season. I doubt they want to go out that way. Blowing a 3-1 series lead to the Florida Panthers in the first round after that record-breaking season. There's no guarantee that they will win a cup, of course. We'll talk about that in segment three. But you want to give it another shot. As long as that dream is on the table of winning another Stanley Cup, and the Bruins will still be pretty good this next season, especially if they are back, then why not go for it? I think what's most likely, oh yeah, and one other factor. This upcoming season is Boston's centennial, and both of these guys have played a huge part in Bruins history over the past almost 20 years now. I think it would be cool if they came back to be part of that centennial season. They were part of this record-breaking season. Now they can be part of this 100th season, and that would kind of serve as a good bookend to their careers. Um, Finishing out that history, celebrating the 100th season, and then stepping back perhaps after next season and allowing the next wave to take over. What's most likely, I think, honestly, is that Bergeron is back, but Krejci retires. It's not necessarily guaranteed that both will either be back or retire. I think the most likely scenario is that Bergeron comes back, but Krejci does not. But again, I didn't really think that he would come back last season either. So you never know. And the door remains open here with a few weeks left until free agency. And Don Sweeney really hoping to hear sooner than later so that he can uh, begin his offseason planning. Or not begin it, but implement his offseason planning. All right, next we're going to talk about the goalie situation and whether the hugs will continue or not. But first, a quick word about today's sponsor. One of today's sponsors, I should say, and that's Bird Dogs. Now, I'm wearing some Bird Dogs shorts at the moment, and I'm not going to lie. They feel amazing. They have a stretch khaki short that is designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and Give my legs a truly sculpted look. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton because they have a cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches. So you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. They also have anti stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Now, right now, Bird Dogs is giving away a free Yeti style tumbler. With your order, that's when you go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL and enter promo code locked on NHL and you'll get this free Yeti style bird dogs tumbler, which I have here in my hands. It's a great uh, thing to have for summer for sure. Go to birddogs.com, use promo code locked on NHL and get this free Yeti style tumbler with your next purchase. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day every single day. The podcast is free and available wherever you get podcasts. 
And uh, we'll be back next week to continue our off-season coverage. Everydayers can expect all the latest when it comes to the Boston Bruins. I'm just seeing now that the Columbus Blue Jackets and the New Jersey Devils are working on a sign and trade for defenseman Damon Severson. They already added Ivan Provorov from the Philadelphia Flyers. And um, very interested to see what the return is there because they already have a number of defensemen under contract. I thought they could be a candidate to grab Matt Grizzlick um, or, a, or a Bruins defenseman, but here we go. Columbus. What's the deal here? Eight years, $6.25 million for Damon Severson with the Columbus Blue Jackets. We'll see what the return is for the um, New Jersey Devils in this trade. Columbus really loading up on defense. Provorov, now Severson, Eric Branson is under contract, Adam Boakvist, Nick Blankenberg, Zach Wierenski. Uh, they're really investing a lot in their defense after a pretty terrible season. Um, trying to give Elvis Merzlikin some help back there. Speaking of goaltending, our next what's more likely, is it more likely that Jeremy Swayman resigns and Linus Allmark is retained and the goalie hugs continue? Or is it more likely that we've seen the end of goalie hugs and Allmark is traded? That's a very tough question because the Bruins, of course, have to come to a contract resolution with Jeremy Swayman, who is a restricted free agent and is one of the better young goalies in the NHL. And when you look at the comparables, you see guys like uh, Jake Ottinger, Spencer Knight, Carter Hart getting in the fours in terms of average annual valuation. And you see Jeremy Swayman pretty much outplaying most of those guys and therefore in line for at least that on his next deal. He's made about 2.08 2 million so far in his NHL career, and he has posted very impressive numbers. Uh, 88 games played in the regular season, something like a 921 save percentage. So that's a full regular season, above average goaltending, and he's going to be due quite a raise. Linus Allmark, Probably going to win the Vezina Trophy this season. Two years left on his deal that will pay him $5 million, which is very reasonable, especially for the numbers that he put up this past season. But I say his value will never be higher. It's very unlikely that he will replicate his 2022-23. He'll still be very good, perhaps above average. But putting up... Uh, the best numbers in terms of wins, goals against the average, save percentage. I mean, that's tough. It, it rarely happens, and his value will indeed never be higher. So do you invest in Swayman and send Allmark on his way? Thank you thank you for your service. Um, you know, his value may have taken a hit a little bit because of his playoff play and the fact that he's been replaced by Swayman in net in each of the past two playoff runs that ended in the first round. Maybe that's a mistake on the coaching where they're not continuing the platoon into the playoffs. And I do think that is a mistake that they didn't do that, but there will be some teams around the NHL looking to upgrade in net willing to add a Vesna trophy winner. And so do you want to pay close to $10 million for your goalie tandem or because of the cap crunch they're in, because of those overages due to Krejci and 
Bergeron, four point five million against the cap. Do you say let's move out Allmark, save money there, and go with Swayman, Brandon Bussey, or Swayman plus a goaltender that you sign in free agency uh, for cheap? I, I look at New Jersey, Mackenzie Blackwood, unlikely to be qualified. Maybe Bob Essence can work his magic there and get him back in working order. And, and Blackwood and Swayman can be a effective tandem. Eunice Carpasalo is available. There's going to be other guys. You look at Vegas right now, Aiden Hill is backstopping them to within two wins of a Stanley Cup. They've relied on Logan Thompson, Lauren Brassois, Jonathan Quick's been in there. You can succeed in the NHL without an elite level goalie. You just need someone to get hot at the right time and definitely begs the question. So what's more likely? I think it is likely that both Allmark and Swayman will be back, but I'm becoming more convinced of the very real possibility that Linus Allmark could be traded this off season. Coming up after the break, we're going to discuss whether or not it's more likely that the Bruins win the cup in 2024 or are lottery bound. But first, a quick word about today's other sponsor, which is the Game Time ticketing app. I was recently on Game Time and my wife and I very much wanted to go see City in Color and Ben Harper in Toronto this summer. Buying tickets was so easy and fast. We got images of the seats and the view, a pretty great deal. And they have everything from sports, music, comedy, and theater near you, including killer deals on last minute tickets and a best price guarantee. Uh, The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email. And all you have to do is download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but create an account, redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Last-minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. Download the GameTime app today. What is more likely, the Boston Bruins win the Stanley Cup in 2024, or they are out of the playoffs and in the lottery. Don't forget the Bruins don't have a first-round pick in 2024. However, it is top 10 protected. And if the Bruins finish or get a top 10 pick next year, that pick will defer uh, to a later date. Detroit owns that pick because of the Tyler Bertuzzi trade. So what's more likely? I've talked about how there's this President Trophy plus one bump lately. Uh, 2018, the Washington Capitals won the Cup the year after they won the President's Trophy. It happened also with the Tampa Bay Lightning recently, the Colorado Avalanche, and now you have the Florida Panthers in the Stanley Cup Final, bringing the series to within one last night with the win after winning the President's Trophy last year. Now, of course, it didn't happen with the 2020 Boston Bruins, but it could happen with the 2023 Bruins, where they come into next season with reduced expectations and just jump into the playoffs and go on a run. Again, it all hinges on whether or not Bergeron and Krejci are back. I don't know if you're winning a cup with Charlie Coyle and Pavel Zaka as your top two centers. It somewhat depends on whether Allmark and Swayman are back. And if they decide to go with that platoon and net next year during the playoffs, I think that was a lesson learned on the part of head coach Jim Montgomery. And just a lot of things have to fall into place. The Bruins got banged up at the worst possible time. Hampus Lindholm was hurt. Bergeron Krejci missed games in the first round. 
Linus Allmark did not seem all, all right in the playoffs. And as much as the Bruins should have won that series, they just didn't have things go the right way. Again, they led the opening round in goals four. High-ranked defense just fell apart at the worst possible time. This one's tough because, you know, it's very easy to say, that, oh, yeah, they had uh, 135 points, an excellent team. So certainly they should come back next year and be still pretty good. But really what is more likely? Probably that that top 10 pick protection comes into play. I hate to say it. I want it to be the other way, but things just align so well for the Bruins this regular season. Um such bad luck in the playoffs. This really felt like their last best shot. And Bergeron and Krejci, even if they come back, they'll be a year older, as will Brad Marchand. Bessie, stop rubbing up on the microphone. And goaltending may not be as good as it was this past season. I don't know. I just, it's hard to be optimistic at this point after how this season ended. I would love for that President's Trophy plus one bump to come into play, but probably not likely for the Boston Bruins. All right, that was our first edition of What's More Likely here on Locked On Boston Bruins. We'll continue playing this throughout the offseason as things progress. First thing on the offseason to-do list is to get decisions on Bergeron and Krejci. What's more likely? I think it's most likely that Bergeron's back, but Krejci is not. And we'll find out soon. And I'll bring you all the latest here on Locked On Boston Bruins because we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Take care of yourselves, friends. Take care of each other. And we'll talk to you again here on Monday. Bless you.